Okay, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. Today, we have a very special episode for you. You know, as, you know, major haunts got canceled, a lot of people were getting sad. But thankfully, there was one haunt that caught our attention that gave us hope and is still giving us hope, and we cannot wait to check it out. This is Mason and Joe of Corona Haunt. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing today? Good, how are you? Doing... A bit tired, but we're doing good. Get in there. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Right before we went on, we went on the air, you guys actually uh, had a, a another build day for you guys. I know it's getting closer and closer to the event, so I can only imagine build days are just getting more stressful as we go. As a late time, like dust over and cuts. Oh yeah, <laughs> dust cuts. Everything you can think of is all over us. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I'm sure it doesn't help that uh, California's on fire, so that makes building even that more. more someone fun. like me who has very like bad allergies, well, I'll be out there and I'm like, you know what? I need to wear a mask today because I literally cannot breathe because my allergies are literally killing me. And then you put the <laughs> yeah. mask on and it help. It doesn't even. It makes you not want to breathe anymore. You know. It's and like, then I'm like, wow, it's it's you know 120 degrees out. My allergies are acting up. My nose is running, and now I have a mask on, and now my snot is in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Yeah, so before we jump into this year's event, because I know this is this is a very special year, of course, with the whole pandemic going on in the world, and you know everybody is just stoked that someone's still doing haunts. So I think I can speak for a lot of the haunt community when we say we're just stoked to be celebrating Halloween in any possible way, form, or shape. And a lot of us love going through haunts, mazes. Um, tell us how it all began, man. I want to know from the start. When, what drove you to want to do this? Well, you can start this one. <laughs> I wasn't there all the so, way. So actually, Joe joined me in 2015. Right. But <laughs> I started Corona Hunt in 2012 Ooh. with the hope that I could create, you know, something similar to Halloween Horror Nights in my backyard. So I went to Halloween Horror Nights uh, Hollywood for my first time in 2012. I came back from my first night there. The next morning, I, you know, went to my dad and I said, I want to put a maze in our backyard. And he was like, what in the world? And I said, I want to put a maze in the backyard. I showed him videos. He was like, oh, this is so cool. So, you know, he was a big drive in the beginning. He bought me uh, like PVC piping with like uh, contractor plastic. And we went from there. So, you know, it was PVC and contractor plastic for the first like three, four years. Uh, definitely not fun with uh, Santa Ana wins. Um <laughs> As we moved on, Joe joined my team in 15 as a scare actor for my freak show, uh, 3D Maze. Um, and then in 16 is when he joined my side of the team. I said, all right, we're going to put wood. <laughs> and then that is when we officially started building with wood and realized, huh, we can actually fight the winds with this. Well, when we first started with wood, it wasn't like, bam, like wood walls. It was just like a wood structure. We and built then we still built with plastic. But as you get, like every year went on. It got better, bigger, stronger, and now we're doing a, literally a whole wood maze now. Building a literal house outside of my house. Facades, <laughs> beams everywhere. It's, it's kind of crazy now. <laughs> we're crazy. <laughs> no, that, that's how it all starts though, right there, man. You, you go to Horror Nights, you go to these events, and you're like, I want to do that. I remember me being a kid just wanting to do that. Like, maybe I should try, but I never got around to doing it. But I think I will one day. Like, I... I have plans that I, we, we actually like Sammy and I, we had a whole plan of like, we were going to do it this year and we were going to, you know, we had a whole like layout. We had a whole storyline and everything. So it's motivated, you know, like much like you guys, it's motivated us to, to do something. We see these haunts, we see how creative they are and we would love to join that, that creativity and, and bring a piece of our madhouse to everyone else yeah, you know so it. it's so it's very tiring but in the end it's so rewarding <laughs> it's just so rewarding to be able to showcase your art and you know my favorite part at least i don't know about joe's my favorite part is literally seeing people go through and come out screaming that means we did our job correctly yeah, yeah. <laughs> <People> scream. <laughs> so joe actually isn't he doesn't oversee the event when we run mm -hmm. the event joe actually loves to act in the maze um, so Joe is one of our like hardcore actors for sure. <laughs> yeah, like, definitely. So Joe, what did, what inspired you to get into scare acting then? Scare acting? Um, the thrill of it. At first, I like, well, when he invited me to scare acting, I was like, uh, I've never done it before. Actually, it's a lie. 
at my own house, I made like, not a little maze, but like, I did a window scare at my house, because of course I was a fan of Hornets too, I was like, That's, what the heck, and the adrenaline I got from scaring people was like the best thing ever, and they invited me to the maze, and I was like, all right, and this is like, the best thing ever, like it's so much fun scaring people, and sometimes they laugh afterwards, it's just like the enjoyment they're getting out of it, it just, I don't know, I just crave it, so now like today, or even last year, it was like probably the best scare acting I ever did, so. Right. No, I, 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 I haven't done my fair share of scare acting. Technically I have, technically I haven't, but I, I know where you're coming from with that adrenaline. Like it is such a fun thing to do. Like I, my buddy one year invited me to his house. They do like a, a driveway walk up where they have it all decorated and everything. Mm-hmm. And he asked me, he's like, Hey, come down for Halloween. We can, you know, me and my brother, you know, he dresses up as Leatherface. I dress up as something and, you know, dress up as whatever you want. And I was like, all right, let's do it. I, I, I think the highlight of my night was when I chased a girl halfway down the block and she wouldn't stop running and her husband was just dying <laughs> in the floor in the middle of the street. It was just hilarious. And when oh, I came back, good. he like thanked me for that. He's like, that was the best thing I've ever seen. Thank you so much. And I was just, I felt I felt I accomplished at least something. Tonight. It's so much fun. And plus you're creating memories for people too. Especially last year for Sweet Tooth. I was actually Sweet Tooth, the main character. But once you put that mask on, the prosthetics, the costume, the, the music and the atmosphere, it literally just puts you in that character. I don't even feel like myself when I do it. I'm just like, I'm that character. So like, it's like literally acting. At that so. point, Joe disappears into the, exactly. in, into I the upside that. down. and <laughs> Literally. He literally like once, once I give him the all clear, it's, I won't hear from him until the end of the night. Usually, yeah. That, that must be a good sign then. That put, probably puts your mind at ease that he's probably, you know, he's doing it. <laughs> he's been, no, he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> You come in to check on him for like a break or something. He's just like not there. He's completely gone. <laughs> it's happened. Honestly, it's actually happened before. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So you start this thing up, you know, you're inspired and everything. You go from there. What was the first haunt that you ever did that like afterwards you're like, okay, we may have something here and let's see what happens next year. What was the first one? To make us feel that way. I feel like maybe silent hill no evil dead evil dead i think after we did evil dead rise of the dead well technically you started doing it before me i know but like but like i think that like made me realize like okay i think we've got a role going here i think it was i think it was definitely there are uh evil dead rise of the dead maze in 2016 so that's when we first um started building with wood and we realized oh like we can actually you know create better atmospheres this way and like you know actually bring in i don't know i just i feel like that maze was like the kickstarter for like the following years yeah better and better better and better and better, and yeah. better right no i i uh i have to say the first year we actually started hitting home haunts was last year we got invited up to a couple of them and i have to say I actually tend to like home haunts somewhat better than some of the events out there. That's pretty cool, actually. That's good. Yeah, it's because <laughs> – no, it's because I see the blood, sweat, and tears that is put into this and the love that's put into this and the creativity that goes into these. Like, these are just some of the most scenic and beautiful things that I've seen. Just to see how people get creative, whether it be in their front yard, their backyard, if they rent out a piece of land, you know, whatever it may be. They get so creative that I'm just impressed at the end. Like, I am just full-blown, like, I don't know if I can do this. And I'm glad there is people out there that do this that can talent off their creativities. Because I feel like there's a lot of people out there that want to do this for a living. There's a lot of people out there that want to be the next John Murdy, that want to be the next John Cook, you know? And (laughs) I think this is the opportunity to really show that creativity. This is why I'm, like, really stoked to be seen what you guys have to bring this year like because i've heard nothing but good things from you guys uh from the past and i've heard the name around many times and this year i'm so i'm actually kind of glad the major haunts got canceled this year i'm gonna say that i am I, I, I do i do miss them dearly don't don't get me wrong <laughs> i miss them but this is going to be the year of the home haunts this is home going haunts, to be oh, the yeah. year everyone can prove what they have. And I think this is really going to be the year where all you guys get to put your names on the map for years to come. If you guys already haven't already, which I think you guys are a household name by this point where 
you guys already have your names on the map, but this is going to further that for you guys. I think this is really, like, because everybody just doesn't know what to do at this point, and they're going to turn to haunts like you guys and go, wow, this is a, this is amazing. I want to come again next year. Whatever these guys do, like, I'm already here. You already got me sold. I loved what they delivered this year. I can't wait to see what they bring next year. So I can tell you right now, I haven't even been through you guys' haunt, and I'm already thinking that. So... <laughs> Well, we appreciate that a lot already. Sure. Really, I'm actually really excited for you to come. But um, even for this year alone, like, yes, we're pushing ourselves for the hunt this year, but there's even obstacles we have to, like, even go forth with this year. Like, our biggest thing, this was the theme and with COVID. Because this year, one of our obstacles was no strip curtains. And we love strip curtains. I, I love strip curtains. <laughs> last year was Sweet Tooth. They worked perfectly for that maze. But for this theme and this year, it should work out. It's it, not going to be. It works, but like, I'm upset because <laughs> I love hanging things. Things in my face is my favorite. Like, I love when there's things hanging from the ceiling. I love going through the curtains and not knowing what's beyond the curtain. And, you know, like having this, having the scenes separated. It's just, it's organized for me. And I like it to be organized. And, you know, not having the strip curtains this year, it sucks, but like I'm also glad that we're still able to even do a haunt to begin with. So it's, I'll, I'll take that over no hanging things this year. I definitely agree. I mean, as much as um, we love to see the hanging things and, you know, those obstacles that in put us, uh, you know, to help separate rooms and, um, you know, help to add to the atmosphere, you know, I think a little bit of something's better than, you know, nothing at all um for those um in the community that you know have not maybe done a home haunt or you know done a haunt in general um how much time and preparation goes into you know putting this event on every year a full year one year exactly sometimes even more than a year depending on oh, like yeah. what we this november december a lot of a lot of times we talk about a theme for the following year when we're still currently building like a current theme so like we're always it's just always on to the next thing it's like we don't have this idea i'm just drawing it out it's it's, <laughs> it's always on to the next thing on to the next thing and like uh for shadow mountain this year we were actually talking about this way back i think in october actually before sweet tooth even opened uh we were talking about next year and you know how good we're going to make next year and what kind of things we're going to make different for next year. And even this year, we've already started uh, talking, talking about next year. Next year is our decade of fear. Ooh. So we finally hit our 10th maze. So this will next year will be big for sure. I don't care how many home haunts are, or I don't care how many haunts are opening up next year. I'm making it my mission to go to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Got some cool ideas for that one to make it make it very special. And who knows? It might change. You never know. It's true. Things are never set and confirmed until it gets closer. It's true. Right. So ideas start flowing in as, you know, last year you said as before the haunt opened. Uh, and then, of course, it looks like about November, December for you guys, you're still trying to figure out that theme. When does it start going into the writing and the, the concept arts? When does that usually start kicking in for you guys? Writing goes a bit, a little bit later because we always go by uh, scenes first. What do, we, what do we want to see first? And then we go by the story with the scenes. Like, what do we want to do? Um, for this particular maze this year, it's all forest. Well, most of it's forest. But we said, let's play with a forest background because we haven't touched that. I mean, we touched a little bit of it in the past, but we want to do a like full, this. like a full one. So I said, let's do that. And then like, okay, what else do we want to do? I was like, let's base it on a mountain. <laughs> Why not? And then it just starts piling on from there. It goes, okay, so forest, mountain, what do we add? What do we add? What do we add? Okay. And then for me personally, I don't know how Joe feels about it, but for me, I like to go towards like our finale of the maze. So I, I kind of go backwards. So I'll start with my finale and be like, okay, so how do I want to end the maze? And then I go backwards from there. And I kind of, I kind of make my way to the beginning of the maze where I kind of get that story put together based off how I ended the maze. So it's... I'm opposite. Yeah, so for me, I like to go backwards. <laughs> I'm the complete opposite. I think about the facade first. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, I... you, you guys got all the writing down, you got all the concepts, so when does... And I'm sorry, I'm just very interested in this world. I love behind the scenes and everything I can get with behind the scenes. So when does, <laughs> when does pre-production start 
like uh, further along into going into like the first steps of production? Summer. Early summer. I think early summer and I know like late spring, we're already working on props for that year. So no, even earlier than that. Earlier. So yeah, we started this year, what, February? Yeah, February's props. February. So we started in February with our props this year. So it's it's it all kind of our main we're not even close to being done with props either. Yeah. Our main construction begins late summer most of the time. So like late August. This year we were a little bit later than last year, but it went up so fast this year that I'm like, okay, I don't even care if we if we started late. <laughs> it's like you're all getting amazing wigs. Yeah. The maze is coming up, so that's all that matters. So uh then at that point I'm assuming there's you, you got your deadlines and as it's starting to get going. So currently, I mean you guys can I guess speak on that right now. I mean what what is like do you guys have a set deadline for this one, obviously, I mean, you guys are going to be opening soon, and I know it's coming up, but it's just, is it just kind of like trying to pace it at a point where you're hoping you don't drive yourself insane, but at the same time, you're just like, we got to get this done. Yeah. Too late. <laughs> Every year is a little different, actually. It actually depends on the theme. Last year, what took a lot of our time was building and painting. This year, this year is the opposite. This year is more of prop making now. So the construction should be done with the whole like outside portion in the next week. next week. Next week. So we're ahead of construction. So after that, we're going to focus on lighting and detailing after that now. So we're right now actually really ahead of schedule, I think, or right on on track. Definitely a little bit ahead right now, which I'm I'm okay with. But sweet too, it's literally just like right at the end. We finish right on time. Like we hit it little, right. Like, we're a little behind at one point. Maybe like two days before the haunt actually opened, we had finally finished and said, "Okay, this is it. We're done." And there's you get to the point. <laughs> you ran out of money. Though, that's <laughs> I ran out. We ran out of money. Um, the like you get to the end of the maze or uh, end of the haunt, and you're like, "Okay, like what else can I add?" You know, but by the time you reach the end, you're like, "You know what? I'm done. <laughs> the, it's it's done. It's constructed. The lighting is great." we're done because you satisfied let's say satisfied satisfied yeah because you get to the end and you're like okay we've been doing this for two and a half months now you know we were behind and now we're ahead and now we're behind again we're satisfied <laughs> to me there's no such thing as a perfect maze but you can try to get close to it so there's always seemed like even like last year i was like i should have done this differently but all in all i'm, I'm satisfied with it and i think this year i'll be satisfied with it too same Definitely. That, that's important is being satisfied. Because um, if you're not satisfied, then that's obviously a sucky situation to be in. Um, but, you know, if you're satisfied or beyond please, those are probably good places to be in. Um, how, big of a, how big of a team do you guys normally have in terms of, like, scare actors and, like, other positions? Construction is just him and I. Uh, scare actors, I think the most we would have in a haunt, I believe, I think 10 was nine. Nine? Nine or ten. Nine or ten actors. And most of the time it's our close friends who donate their time to us. Um, and I'm I'm sure they're, you know, praying we don't go any more nights because we steal their nights every year. Um, but it's most of the time it's our close friends. Sometimes we look out for new actors, but a lot of the time it's our close friends because they, as well as us, enjoy like the atmosphere we've created and they just want to help support us. Definitely. And so now pre-production is done. Production's done. Uh, I'm just kind of, I'm not saying it's done now. I'm just saying like going through the timeline here. Uh, talk to us about opening day. So how does that have to feel like from previous years? Like you must feel just relieved. This is out there. You know, you're like, okay, I just hope everyone likes it at this point. <laughs> oh my God. That's, that oh my God. Opening night is the night that I go mentally insane because I'm a perfectionist and I want to make sure everything is perfect. I want to make sure my actors are on point. I want to make sure my scenes are on point. My scents are working. You know, all the lighting is working. I want to make sure this audio is perfect. And it's opening night for sure is one of the hardest nights, especially for us. Oh yeah. Um, we've noticed it kind of every year, every year our opening night is, I don't want to say messy because it's not messy, but it's definitely stressful. It's one of the more stressful nights of the year. Um, 
other than our Halloween nights, because Halloween nights, I don't know how it'll be this year, but normally our Halloween nights are absolutely insane because the community I'm in is, we get hundreds and hundreds of people. The main is definitely gets hit. Like it, even, hard. even props, <laughs> even props, like last year at Sweet Tooth on Halloween, our conveyor belt got ruined. I don't even so, know how. It, like things get ruined in this maze. And it's just, like, we try all the like, things we can to make it sterile. It's, like it is sturdy, but like we would do like prop the nail in the um, props, glue it down and all that. And still things get taken and like ruined. It looks like a, sometimes it looks like a tornado rolls through it. The first night it's always, it's hard. It's hard. It is hard. The first it's, night is mentally, physically tiring, but. And then you get to the next night because we always do an opening night and then typically it's the weekend so the next night we're kind of like okay we got this this first is night, a lot easier like we, survived. we did it we survived <laughs> so it's definitely opening night is the hardest night for sure and our final night is always hard because it's like okay well we're gonna wake up the next morning and realize well it's done and now we have to take our two months of work down <laughs> that's <laughs> and that's always the depressing part but it's always like you know and then we're back to the beginning where how can we make it better? So it, the cycle begins, or re, restarts, basically. Right. Um, you, so you going back to the uh, actors real quick. Um, how, so how does that come to be when uh, it's come time, showtime? Do you guys, uh, what, what's the schedule like going towards uh, getting them in blocked and getting them, you know, in their positions and everything? How does all the blocking and everything go for that? Whew. that's also a disaster <laughs> <laughs> some people are outside some people are still eating oh inside. My gosh. we it's always like... we always provide um food and snacks and drinks for our actors every single night some nights we'll have you know like a fast food joint we'll have like a buffet from the fast food you know set out or we'll make food or anything there's the actors are always fed and you know well hydrated and everything that's something i personally want to make sure that they have because they're doing us a favor so i'm going to return the favor with food who doesn't like food yeah our base is nothing without our actors um that's all right you already got me sold i, I if you guys would have me i would love to scare act for you <laughs> <laughs> um so the we, we've tried blocks before we've tried to do like 15 minute intervals and 30 minute intervals where i would replace an actor with a current actor in the same spot and it never works especially with how like high volume we are it's more for the theme parks because yeah. with us is like we have to disinfect the mask and then turn it on like give it to someone else but like it's too much you just got to keep like. going and going and going so we we kind of do a whole like a whole maze shut down for five to ten minutes every like 30 to 45 minutes roughly depending how busy we are um if we get like a wave of people and then it's quiet for a little while we'll take a break from there and then we'll call back the actors once we think that more people are coming. That way they're prepared. Um, yeah, we have walkie-talkies. So we're able, we're unable to, like, talk with everybody to make sure everybody's kind of, you know, ready. Um, yeah, we definitely learned from the past. Well, um, last two years, we got brought in the walkie-talkie. So every year is getting more organized. So even, like, getting our actors into the maze before it does start it is getting better. But, like, probably, like three years ago, mess. But this year and last year better um we have more than other like our other friends are like all right guys it's maze time so we have people in the backyard we have people in the first room we have people in the garage it's kind of all separated they're they're kind of in their own groups actually so like my our main portion of the backyard where most of the time our facades are i'll always have two or three people back there they're kind of their own group and then i have the mid part of the maze where it's like two actors they're their own group and then we have like our first room and our garage since they're right next to each other that's like three or four people depending how many we have they're their own group so they the word kind of travels on you know like hey it's break time or hey it's time to get ready so we kind of rely on we kind of rely on each other to make sure everything is running properly and i think that's the best way to go yeah for us at least definitely i yeah i think that's it that's that sounds like a great you guys got it you guys got it down you guys got a system <laughs> somewhat <laughs> it's getting better um, obviously, with running a haunt, it requires a lot of time, um, both obviously pre and then during the uh, during the run. Um, do you guys find time to actually like go visit other haunts um, as well to like get inspiration? A little bit. We do normally. We buy the um, like the killer nights pass for Halloween Horror Nights. So like days where you know we're building and it's you know eight o'clock. Sometimes we're like, you know what, we deserve to go to Horror Nights tonight. 
you know, grab a beer, go through a maze, you know? You Sometimes we do that. Language, and it's I'm like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then like other haunts. So like um, some of the other home haunts, we've gotten lucky to be able to see when we're still running. So like sometimes we'll catch a home haunt operating when we're not operating. How many did we do last year? Three? Three or four, actually. We hit a lot last year, luckily. We oh, had a wow. we what had a huge it? gap in between our dates. We had like, I think we ended the 26th and then we ran back up on the 29th or the 30th. So we had like that three or four day gap where we were able to like experience yeah, some, some haunts, other yeah. haunts. Um, definitely Murder House Productions. That's one of our closer friends. Um, our favorite to visit. Um, I think last year we weren't able to see it in production because our haunt dates were literally identical. Um, but we were able to go out there uh, the following night after uh, they had ran and got to see everything that they do. Yeah, we saw it in Halloween time. Did we? Yeah, it was Christmas time. We didn't see it in production. Christmas time. Okay, we did see... Because like, I jumped like four times. I, all right. We did see her uh, their haunt uh, last year. So sometimes we get lucky and sometimes we're kind of disappointed because like there's so many that we want to see and so little time, especially when you run your own haunt. It's like, uh, like, you know, do we have time for this? You know, like we try to make as much time as possible because we want to be able to support like our friends and other home haunters, you know? So it, it definitely, you can feel the time crunch. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. I, I can imagine that, uh, with putting on your, like you said, there is sacrifices to it, obviously. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, I could, I could say the same. Even when, you, when you, when you run a channel and you're trying to cover as many things as you can, but you're limited to, okay, I can't go to everything, so I got to figure out what I want to hit, and like, I, I had to make sure that you guys were on the list this year. I mean, we have, I think we, I think we had like up to like twenty different places we could hit, but of course, Ooh. everyone wanted to everyone's kind of scheduling it around the same date. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to throw it out. These are the ones I want to hit. These are the ones I'm going to. Uh, you guys can come with me if you want, but I'm going to these ones. <laughs> and, yeah, you guys are on my list, obviously. I mean, I I was very stoked when uh, we, we first got into contact about it. And um, I, I think it was actually Sammy that drew me to your guys' attention about your haunts and everything. So, um Thank you, Sammy. That's why you're my ride or die. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he, he's, uh, he's... I know. Thanks, the right Sammy. hand. Uh, but no, I, I when he told me about you guys and I started learning more about you guys, uh, your stuff for this year, my first reaction was, I'm just glad someone's doing something through this pandemic because I don't think I can... I can't do... I can't go without a hot season. I will be very depressed if that happens. Uh, Same. And when he told me about you guys, I was like, all right, I like what they're going to bring to the table. I'm interested. Let's wait for when more stuff drops and we'll see what happens. And sure enough, as more stuff, more info started coming out, I was sold. So now I'm just waiting until uh, the opening nights, man. I just, I can't wait. I, I, it's around this time every year, the, the, the haunt, the haunt bug starts coming up and it's just like, I'm oh, yeah. ready to I already to feel on. it. I felt it in August. Yeah. Especially with the whole Midsummer Scream thing. You know, I and we just... were actually invited to that this year to bring Sweet Tooth, which was our it would have been our first time ever in their Hall of Shadows. So that's something disappointing that was took, taken away from us this year because of everything <laughs> yeah, going we, on. That we was were, very disappointing. We were but... we were extremely sad too. I know me and Sammy. Hopefully that's... next year. <laughs> yeah, next year I, I'm hoping things will be a lot better. Uh, but oh, me yeah. and Sammy, that's one of our favorite events to go through, go to as far as conventions go, and. We were so we were so bummed out. Hall of Shadows is probably seventy five percent of why we love going to that event. I mean, Same. the other twenty five percent, it's usually work, but we still enjoy it. It's podcast and of course the panels and stuff. But the Hall of Shadows is literally Sammy and I's getaway of like, let's take a breather real quick. We've been working all day. Let's go through some haunts. Let's see what everyone. And that's where I actually first got to get introduced into the home haunt. That's where, when I first went in 2018, that is when I saw, oh, there's other people doing haunts besides these industries, man. Like, there are more talented people out there. We went through a, a bunch, me and my cousin, that year, and I was just blown away. We tried to go through, I think, all of them, and we were just, 
we were just stunned of what we saw. And so I think that's what really struck my interest in 2019. I was like, I want to go to more home haunts. I want to see the creativity from people because I know it's there. I just haven't seen it to, you know, like what they show you at Midsummer Screaming is just a preview. I want to see the entire thing. And so that that's the thing, too. I mean, I know you guys were going to be prepared to do come for the first time uh, for 2020. What do you think – for like the Hall of Shadows and stuff, what do you think would be the the hardest thing about bringing a preview of your maze? You, I mean, there's probably tons of scenes you would love to bring, but your maximum, like, what was that going into kind of struggling to bring that to life? I think the big, I think the bigger struggle that we were facing was how big do we want to make this? It was gonna be pretty. Big. It was going, it was going to be pretty big, and I was getting a little nervous because I was like, you know, we've never... <laughs> we can do it. I was like, we've never done anything like this. We only have the two or three days for setup. You know, I'm like, oh. So I think that was the the hardest part was how big do we make this? And w- the drawings we had, it, it we brought a pretty good majority of our maze, which was pretty impressive. And it didn't seem like it would take up too much time. I don't think. <laughs> I think. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> it's so long ago now. <laughs> I know. It's like the, the it, Midsummer Scream. It was like everybody was hyped for it. I mean, we talked to Rick earlier in the year, and we were stoked, and he was stoked, and then he was holding out, and I was like, "I'm, I'm holding on to it." I know. We're, we're like, we're all holding that rope. Oh, like, we don't want to let go. As soon as I got the email, I was like, oh, this is the email I didn't want to receive. So I clicked on it and read it. And I was like, yep, there it is. It yeah. sucks, though, because, like, we were so excited to bring that black light paint maze to Midsummer. It was going to, it was just something we have never really done before. And we were so excited to showcase We it. just knew that everyone was just going to love it. And, like, we were so excited for just showing that Midsummer screen. And then, nope. That's it. Boom. Taken away. And now we're never going to do it again because all the paint's gone now. Like we had to use the walls for this year and that's it. So that's kind of the upsetting part. Of we didn't that. really say our goodbyes to it. We didn't get to say goodbye to Sweet Tooth in the way we wanted to. So this year, obviously, we reused our walls and we brought back our first set of walls back in August and painted them over with black. And I was like, well, this is the goodbye we're going to get. <laughs> and I'm over. I'm just like, yeah, now, now, now we're over it because it's like, you know, it takes two or three coats to cover this neon paint. Like, oh my gosh, I neon paint is not on my list of great things. Oh, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. <laughs> not fun, but it 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 came out so beautifully, and it just sucks we didn't get to say goodbye to it in the way we wanted to. But I think I think Shadow Mountain definitely gives it justice. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. But it, I, obviously, yeah. You felt you wanted that one last goodbye, but didn't get to have it the way that uh, you wanted to send it off, unfortunately. Um, I will say, like, when it comes to the Hall of Shadows, I think those are some of the most creative mazes and also some of the most terrifying mazes I've ever gone into. Um, yeah. Because I definitely, you definitely set your expectations of, okay, it's just going to be Trust like... Trust his word when he says that, too, because he gets, he you know, he's getting used to the haunt scene, but with, with home haunts, it's a little bit different. So trust his word when he says that. <laughs> Yeah, um, because these people are not getting paid to scare. They're doing it out of sheer enjoyment. Oh, yeah. um, uh, and so they are some pretty scary people. I've never been more scared in my life than going through the Hall of Shadows because everywhere I look, someone wanted my blood, I'm pretty sure. Or at least my screen. <laughs> um, and so I felt that would be really exciting to see what you guys brought. Oh, I wish. I wish we would have been able to do it. It would have been so... It would have been such a highlight for our year. Like, it, it just would have made us feel, like, even better about, you know, that maze. Because that maze, I think, was the biggest highlight in our haunt careers thus far. Our whole life. I think my whole life. This, this far, I think Sweet Tooth was one of the biggest highlights of yeah. m- my haunt career being, you know, since the beginning. It's definitely one of the most memorable mazes that we've done. So it, it was sad that we couldn't relive it. Well, at least on the bright side here... You're on Midsummer Scream's radar. So, Very true. Very true. I'm hoping for 2020, they can give you guys another shot because I can guarantee them you'll blow their socks off. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, that's the good thing. You're on the radar. So, you know, they realized this year was a no-go. So, they're going to probably uh, – Rick, if you're watching, give these guys another shot. <laughs> <laughs> 
we love you, Rick, man. Come on. Do do us a solid for the Knights of Horror. Tell them, you know, Knights of Horror Please. approves of Chrono. Please. If that if that means anything, I don't know where our names at, but Rick, we love you. Give Chrono a chance. We'll put effects in there. <laughs> because come on, I mean they got Corona in their name, one of the best Mexican beers ever. Come on. Smell effects this year though. Oh yeah. This <laughs> good. There's so many exciting things for this year that we're 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 trying to top Sweet Tooth, but it's it's like a like a uh, I don't know, but then it's like oh, but what They're about so this? Different. They're so different. They're so different. They're so different. It's just a t- two completely opposite mazes. And that's what we had teased it as to everybody. Is that, you know, this is something that you have not seen from us before. You've not seen this darker side. We're always very, I don't want to say always bright, like Sweet Tooth, but like very, like... In the middle. In between. We've never actually ventured into the darker side of the haunts. So that's what we are so excited about this year, is that we're finally being able to get that more sinister feel in the maze. Like I, I personally, for me, like I'm, I'm all about like that sinister, like suspenseful feel. Um, so this, that's definitely what I'm most excited for for this year is that we're finally getting able to adventure into that uh, genre. Definitely. Um, so for those watching today, where could they uh, make their reservations uh, for this uh, upcoming season? So for reservations, if you just go to coronahunt.com on our main page, there's a reservations tab, and then you'll just click on the reservations and it'll take you to um, the website that we are using through them, which is called Tables Ready. It's normally used for restaurants, but it's actually working really well for what we need to use it for. Um, that, uh, then you're given, uh, it'll say like Corona Hunt reservations, and then mm. you'll click on one of the dates that were open and it'll take you to, you know, oh, there's available times for, you know, 8.30, 8.45, or 8.50. You basically select that, choose how many people are in your group, and it's done. Um, what days are already sold out, though? Oh, our opening weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday are already sold out. Um, but we do have a virtual line that we're going to also implement. Um, basically, when you show up, if you don't have a reservation, you just take your smartphone or whatever phone you have, and you'll turn on your uh, camera and scan our QR code at the front, and that'll take you to the website that we're using for the reservations to our virtual line where you'll be able to put in your name and your phone number with how many are in your group and that'll actually add you to a standby line that we um are actually i'm very glad to have as well um because i know a lot of people have been discouraged to see that our reservations are gone i was like no 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 um there's two ways two ways to experience I reservations did, I are made for people who want to make a reservation in advance and like, like i that was mainly for like people who wanted a specific date and a specific time So I wanted to make sure people had the option between, you know, what if they wanted a standby line? So we were able to deliver that standby line, which I'm very happy. All we're doing is making sure people don't linger on the property. That's all we're doing. And that's hard for us, especially, I don't know how, that's why our Halloween night actually isn't available on the reservations just yet, because we're not entirely sure how it's going to, how it's going (laughs) to go yet, because it's, our Halloween is insane. So I'm a little nervous for that, that's for sure, but we're going to keep our strict protocols in place. Um, you know, we're putting them in place, not just for the safety of us, but for our guests and for our actors. Um, you know, we're going to try hard to keep, we're going to try hard to keep, you know, everything in place. Um, we're even going to have the social distancing markers just in case two groups do show up at the same time. I might even space them out even more than six feet. Um, just cause I know, I mean, personally for me, I don't, even before all this, I don't like people in my bubble. So I don't like people up in my business. So like, you know, this six month thing has been pretty great. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to have a reservation and a virtual line because I know there's some people that are going to show up and not have a reservation or didn't know. So we do have that option for um, other guests. Right. No, I like that. That's the giving people. So if you guys just, you know, you guys just found out about them today. Reservations are online. I know the opening weekend is sold out, but uh, you guys got more up, right, for another weekend? There's still reservations yeah. up. So that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I believe is the 23, 24, 25 are uh, gone. gone. But the gone. following weekend, which is Halloween weekend, so 29 and 30 are still available. And I think they're, I think 29 is getting close to being closed off, but I know that 30 is wide open. And then our, our physical opening night on the 22nd is still wide open as well. 
And then, of course, if you guys don't get your hands on a reservation, they still got the virtual queue. So don't be upset. There's still ways around it. So Still ways to experience. Yes, there's ways around it. You may have to wait a little bit longer, but it's okay. There's still ways around it. We're hoping not. That's kind of my goal. I'm, I'm hoping I can balance between the two. That's what I was also nervous for is because we've never done anything like that before. Oh, yeah, this is so, so I'm like, you know, don't, the last one don't, expect, don't, don't expect a lot from me because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> the good well, part I, know, is guys, I know what I'm doing, but it's, it's how we're going to balance it is going to be an interesting thing. Because I know the reservations, uh, the virtual queue displays a wait time. So it actually corresponds with the reservation. So it's actually going to add a uh, queue, estimated queue time. It's like a fast pass. It's, it's like a fast pass, but my worry is um, that with you know a night that has completely full reservations, I'm worried that this wait time is going to stay like 200 minutes or something like that. Because I'm like, uh, that, it's not true. Because we could definitely slide people in left and right. So... I'm not too stressed about it. Hey, technology, man. It's come a long way. It really has. <laughs> um, gentlemen, before we let you go, can we get any sort of sneak preview of what people can expect for this year's attraction? Good smells. Um, disgusting, disgusting creatures. Disgusting. Absolutely dis- Looking at some of these, it's disgusting. <laughs> Um, get your hiking boots on. <laughs> you put your hiking boots on. That's that's, that's kind of that's kind of just the way we have been teasing it is. Put you're your gonna hiking. be you're gonna be on a mountain. That's you all will feel like you are on a mountain on a trail that is absolutely gone bonkers. You you brought up that it's that it it smells. Maybe it's a, a good thing. Maybe some people uh, were wearing masks at the moment. <laughs> if people can't handle the smell, <laughs> Very true. they Very got the mask true. on. <laughs> um, Guys, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and we are stoked about this uh, haunt. Um, so go ahead and uh, check out Corona Haunt on their website. Corona Haunt is coronahaunt.com, right? I was right about yes. that. And Corona then I understand you guys are also on Instagram. Yes, Corona Haunt. Corona Haunt on Instagram. And Twitter. Corona Haunt on Twitter and as well. And Twitter. So check them out. Um, go give them a follow. Tell them that Knights of Horror sent you. And uh, definitely pick up, if, try to get yourself a reservation. And if not, virtual line will still be intact for them. So if you guys can't get your hands on a reservation by any means necessary, still maybe go check it out. Get into the virtual line. Um, it's sounding really good. I love, I love what I hear in gentlemen. I'm, and I'm, thank you for the exclusive behind the scenes of how everything goes down. We really, like I said, I'm a sucker for behind the scenes. So first thing I do when I get a movie, watch the behind the scenes. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your guys' busy schedule. I know it's coming close, but um, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your guys' busy schedule to talk with us about this and to further uh, get the word out there because home haunts are going to be the underdogs of the year, man. They're going to come out, and they're going to show you what they can bring. And I can tell you right now, from what we heard from Corona, I'm already, I'm already stoked. I cannot wait. I am just I, I'm just glad that there's there's guys yeah. like these that are gonna be saving all of them. These boots are these, these boots are made for walking, right? Right. <laughs> boots are made for walking. Uh, You'll need them. <laughs> I told you guys time and time again on Instagram. Uh, just thank you for all the work you guys are putting in. I know there's a lot of probably a lot of complications with COVID, and and I know that yeah. it's probably arose new challenges for you guys, but that's testing us. It's testing. Us. Yeah. Um, but I just want to thank you guys for just keeping the spirit of Halloween alive because, you know, there's people that love to go to these events every year to love to go through mazes. And if it weren't for, for gentlemen like you guys, I don't think, uh, we would have a haunt season this year. So thank you for keeping that spirit of Halloween alive Uh, among with all the other home haunters out there. I mean, I'm not just, you know, all you guys, like you guys are just working around the clock to try to make sure everyone has a safe, but enjoyable experience. And I think that's just the best thing for all of us in the haunt community. We just want to enjoy something because this year has been a very rough year and we need some yes, enjoyment in our lives. So thank you guys so much for keeping Halloween alive. We really appreciate it. And we cannot wait to experience this. Thank you. We'll We're see you there. stoked. It's going to be fun. So of course, follow them on all the social media at Corona haunt. And like I said, tell them that's a horse sent you and, 
go ahead and make sure to check out their haunt this season. It's going to be a fun one. I'm excited for it. Going on for two weekends, so all the details and information will be held on their website, on their social media. So go ahead and check them out. Uh, coronahaunt.com and at coronahaunt on Twitter and Instagram. So go ahead and give them a follow. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching uh, another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. We are just uh, stoked to get into the home haunt game and talk to some of these people for behind the scenes. I think it's it's a great creative process, and we just love hearing it all. And we love giving all the information to you guys so you guys can get uh, an inside uh, look on what it takes to put on one of these. So I'm, I'm excited for you guys to be watching this. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, of course, follow us on social media. Sammy, what's our social media? Uh, uh, at Knights of Horror on Twitter and at The Knights of Horror on Instagram. He got it today, man. He got it. He got it. That's always a rough one for him. It always is. Uh, and, of course, if you guys are, again, new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, be aware every time we put up a new video. Haunt season is going to be good. We're going to promise to give you guys some of the best content. We're even traveling out to Arizona in November to hit up some haunts. So Ooh. we're doing our first traveling that, and I think there will be a whole vlog of me traveling out there, meeting up with Sammy, and actually going to the haunt. Sammy's actually going to go to that same haunt this weekend. So stay tuned on the Instagram to get exclusive behind-the-scenes look at that. That would be cool. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. We hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you guys next week. Peace. Bye.